Somehow, humans can look at each other and study the arrangement of facial muscles and then process that information into an understanding of other people's thoughts and emotions. It's an astonishing skill because the cues are so subtle and the processing is so rapid that the whole operation runs under your radar. It only takes 33 milliseconds for your brain to process basic information about someone's facial expression and start reacting to it. So you put one electrode right above your... So how does it do that? And the other right on your cheek. There we go. Great. I've invited a group of people to run an experiment. I've wired them up to a machine that measures movements in their facial muscles and I've asked them to look at photographs of faces. When participants are looking at a photograph with a smile or a frown, we see this activity on the graph, which indicates that their own facial muscles are moving. Why? Well, it turns out that they are automatically mirroring with their own faces the expressions that they're seeing. That was fun, right? The last yeah. time? Yeah, it was a fun <laughs> test. But what purpose does this mirroring serve? I've invited a second group of people. They're similar to the first group, except for one thing. This is the most lethal neurotoxin on the planet. If you were to ingest even a fraction of this, your brain could no longer tell your muscles how to contract, and you would die of total paralysis. So it seems unlikely that anyone would pay to have this injected into themselves, but they do. This is known as botulinum toxin, or Botox. If you put it in your forehead muscles, it paralyzes them to reduce wrinkling but there's a less well-known side effect. When our participants with Botox went through the same tests, their facial muscles responded less. No surprise there. But replicating an experiment out of Duke University, we had both groups look at facial expressions and now they were asked to choose the word that best described the emotion they were seeing. Panic. Panic. Upset. On average, the Botox group was worse at identifying the emotions correctly. Skeptical? It seems that the lack of feedback from their facial muscles impairs their ability to read other people. The paralyzed faces of Botox users not only makes it hard for us to tell what they're feeling, those same frozen muscles make it hard for them to read us. And that tells us something. When I'm happy or sad, part of that feeling relies on the unconscious feedback from muscles in my face. And our social brains take advantage of that. So when we're trying to understand what someone else is feeling, we try on their facial expression. This automatic mirroring of expressions is just one way in which we understand others.